through your mind immediately when you drive this Q Branch MI6 shaken, not stirred bond. And it only compounds when you see and then drive this new Vantage, as it's as stunning to look at as it is to drive. So let's first explore this new Vantage and what it is before we come back here and put it through its paces. The new Vantage is that type of rare car that it's so different to its predecessor that it immediately gets an emotional response out of you. It's the type of car when you see the release pictures for the first time on the web, you send it to those close to you, your fellow petrol heads, and you ask, would you? And if so, what spec? But we'll be forgiven because it's not just us. You see, there's a famous story about the car used in Spectre when Sam Mendes, the director of Skyfall Inspector, went to Gaydon to have a look at what was going to be Bond's car, which was the DB11. But then he saw a scale model of what was to be the Vantage. Now, of course, that was probably something that looked similar to the DB10, and he convinced Marek Reichman, designer at Aston, to build 10 to 15 cars for the film, and that's what we know now as the DB10. And when you put them together here, you can kind of see how similar they are in reality. But as nice as the DB10 was, it looks last generation compared to this. This is so much more brave in terms of design, but every single angle of it is more aggressive. It's more of a hunter, which is why Aston give it that nickname internally. The front end is very visibly Vulcan. There's a massive Aston shaped front grille here, big enough to cool the new AMG power unit inside, and it's all hidden under a very sculpted and muscly bonnet. The lights are slim like the DB10, but more rounded like a traditional DB shape. Some say that it should have been kept perhaps sleeker. There's a lot of comments about the lights. I think it depends which way you look at it. I wonder what it would look like with perhaps sharper lights like the DB10. There's a double bubble roof and the side is just absolutely gorgeous. You've got the air outtake just behind the wheel arch to take out air pressure from the front wheel arch. Nothing has been done without an aerodynamic basis for the design. Marek did not want anything on this car that didn't need to be there in terms of line. So it's not just pretty, everything is done for a purpose. And as I said, to my eyes, it really makes the DB10 look old hat. I really, really do like the forged wheels, especially with the gloss back and the diamond cut finish, but wouldn't it be nice if you got wheels a bit similar to the DB10 like you have on the DB11? Maybe they should do that one day, it'd look quite good. I really like the side sill under the doors. It's really large and it just gives it a look, something like a concept car that you wouldn't normally see in production. It looks really aggressive and keeps the middle of the car looking slim. As you come around to the rear, you see that the tail swoops upward and finishes off in a spoiler type shape, finishing off what is a really sporty looking car all in all. The rear now that we have hindsight, it's got quite a bit of DBS in terms of the lights, yet the shape is distinctively Aston if you removed all the badges. And with reference to the badges, I love how on these Astons, you haven't got engine de denominations anywhere, V8s, this, that, the other. It doesn't even say Vantage on it. All it says is Aston Martin. And that's just something that speaks to me in terms of minimalism. The boot is of course a hatchback. And then you look at the rear diffuser, so aggressive. It really sets itself apart and you'll see more of that as we're driving on the road. You can have the bottom parts of the diffuser in a different color as well, which can make the car look really quite aggressive on the road. And then of course you've got the two pipes, which are the real pipes coming out of the diffuser, all finishing off what is a really aggressive and sporty looking rear end. Overall, the car looks almost square, really aggressive, like it's gonna pounce. And when you drive it, that's exactly what it's like. It really is a vicious little car. So as we get started, there are some things that endear me towards the Vantage immediately. Just like the DB11, when you put your foot on the brake, the engine start stop lights up. So let's give that a start. And kind of like in a Ferrari, you can pull the gear lever here and it will engage into drive. So if we set off. Now immediately this interior is more jet fighter than it is DB11. 
And one thing other reviewers haven't liked is this center console area, which having lived with it, I really, really like it. I think it sets itself apart from the DB11 in a big way because it looks so special here. You've got rid of all the haptic um, functions that you have in the DB11, which really when you're driving aren't the best thing in the world. Instead, you've got physical buttons here, which are really easy to use and they look really good. I liken the sheer number of buttons to what you find in something like a 911, but once you get used to them, they're easy to use and plus it's easier to actually get to the gear selection that you want to make here rather than when it was up there in the DB11. So this all works really well, it looks really good, especially if you've got matte carbon surrounding it like we have in this spec. It just looks really, really special. One thing I don't like, I don't like these air conditioning round knobs. They've got no affirmative clicking when I'm turning the wheel, um, which is slightly annoying when you're trying to use it. The infotainment system is way ahead of the previous Garmin and Volvo nonsense that Aston customers had to deal with. It's reskinned from Daimler Mercedes-Benz command system, which is a great infotainment system, really easy to use, gets the job done, the maps are brilliant. In the command system, you also get 360-degree camera as well, which is great for a car in this segment, as, for example, the AMG GT doesn't have it, but these wide cars really need them. I absolutely love the squarish steering wheel. It really reminds me of the, again, square-shaped one you saw in Spectre that Bond was using in the DB10. It's such a pleasure to hold, and it's so far away from those previous Aston steering wheels that, frankly, just look like a giant round breakfast table. Another change from DB11 is how the gear levers are now extended a bit at the bottom, and it makes them just easier to use. And that's something that's come from purely customer and developmental feedback. This particular car has got a chrome package inside, so all these trims, the gear selector, the trim around the vents, etc., they're all silver as opposed to the uh, darkish black aluminium that we saw in my DB11 review. It looks okay, it kind of depends what spec you have, but I think I prefer the darkish one for a sports car. The interior is actually really spacious, there's extra room given here to your elbows. I feel like it's more spacious than what we had in the DB11 where you're kind of pushed against the door because of the enlarged center console. It's not like that in the Vantage. I think you can get some two pretty big people in here. And the door cards just look gorgeous in the way they're designed, especially in a two-tone spec like this one. Red and black with the silver. Oh, it's rare that we get an almost perfect spec on the channel, but this, this is really close to it. I think just some Alcantara around this interior would have been perfect, but you can do all of that if you're ordering Advantage. There is almost no limit to what they won't do for you in terms of interior and exterior choices. Loads of luggage space in the back as well. You will get your set of golf clubs, which is important. And of course, you've got a little umbrella holder because this is a car for an English gentleman. There's a lot of little features in here that remind me of Bond's DB10 car as well, like the stitching on the headrest and the Aston Martin in the middle between the seats, which comes straight out of that car and generally just the ambiance of it, the way that the digital speedometer is shaped is also very similar, even though it was analog in the film. Um, the digital speedo is good. I think it can be built upon. Um, one thing that is good is that when you change modes, if I go into sport plus track and then back into sport, the look of the main dial, the main rev counter and your speedo changes and it gets redder and redder as you go into hotter and hotter modes and I like that. I didn't like in the new M5 for example when nothing changed on the digi screen. One thing Aston have nailed is the seating position all bar the fact that you cannot see even a millimeter of the large bonnet in front of you so it's quite intimidating but I guess that kind of adds to the experience. The actual seats and the seating position are brilliant. They hug you, but they are comfortable at the same time. They're a really good mix of a comfortable and a sporty seat. And plus, they look the absolute business. So one thing that's different in the Vantage and the DB11 is where the DB11 had the three driving modes of GT, Sport, and Sport Plus. Vantage starts at Sport, much like the new DBS. So it goes from Sport, Sport Plus, to Track. So there's different software in play here for these three modes specifically for the Vantage but as soon as you first start driving this car you immediately feel even 
in the lowest setting that it is completely different to drive compared to the DB11. And if I flick the drive select now into Sport Plus, as the uh, exhaust flaps open a little, this will come as a bit of a shock to anyone who's had experience with previous Astons because when you had the old VH platform, all the cars were designed on modified versions of that platform. So when you had the previous Vantage, it drove and felt like a smaller DB9. And then the Rapide wasn't that different to the DB either. And the reason for that is that particular architecture wasn't easily modified. Whereas this new aluminium one, this car has 30% of difference compared to the DB11 for getting its shorter wheelbase, etc. And immediately you feel that. You feel you are driving a completely different car. Of course, having an interior that now looks completely different helps that fact. And this is something that the designers and engineers at Aston were given as a brief by boss Andy Palmer that every car has to look and feel different inside and out. So mission accomplished then. It looks like a totally different car outside and when you drive it, it feels completely different on the road and I'll get deeper into that when we talk about the handling and the steering later on. But first, this engine, it is AMG's best engine, the four litre V8 bi-turbo. It's pushing out 503 brake horsepower in this and a massive 685 newton meters of torque and you do feel it in the smaller car. But as we discussed in the DB11 review, although the power unit is from AMG, don't expect it to sound like an AMG car. And that's one of the most pleasing things because being a big AMG fan myself, if I came into a V8 Vantage and I heard something like the AMG GT, I would be sorely disappointed. Whereas that is not what this car sounds like. So the engine comes with Aston's own modified exhaust and a few other little changes to make it Aston's own. And it's of course paired to Aston's own gearbox. So it's a ZF eight speed torque converter in this car. And as we discovered in the DB11, it's a really good gearbox that shifts exactly when you want it to. I was really surprised I came into it thinking that it wouldn't, but it's a damn good gearbox. And in the Vantage, the final drive ratio is shorter, so the whole car feels a bit more rabid, and it just gives it a different feel to the DB11. The engine, of course, sits well behind the front axle, so it makes it more of a front mid-engine setup, much like the AMG GT is as well. But because of that, it's got a wonderful 50.2 to 49.8 balance, because being accurate is such a British thing. It also doesn't feel quite as leery as the AMG version. It seems to put down power in a more sophisticated way, less muscle car. Now the Vantage has always been Aston's best-selling car. So coming into this, they nicked Matt Becker from Lotus, who was their handling expert, who is very adept at making good handling cars. They also have Mark Swag from Ferrari as their chief technical officer. So Aston are taking their best-selling car very, very seriously. Now, as I put the car into Sport Plus, having both in Sport Plus is my favorite setting on this car. But much has changed in this car compared to the previous car and indeed the DB11. Most significantly, now we've got a solidly mounted rear subframe. And what that means is that we get more communicated to us, more feeling of what the car is doing. And this was one of my biggest gripes about the DB11 especially when you're coming in and out of corners that eventually when you hit the limit you would lose feeling of what the car was doing in the rear and it would stop you from driving faster which this is not like that at all it's a proper sports car it wants to tell you exactly what it's doing and where your limits are it's of course got a shorter wheelbase than the db11 in fact even a shorter one than the 911 but it's wider but the steering is just so good in this car. Now this is an electronic steering rack, which is the first one that Aston have done. And I'm just amazed at how well they've done it. In fact, I had to go back and check the specs to make sure that this car was in rear wheel steer. That's how good the steering feels in it. And while yes, it'll never be as good as the old hydraulic setup, as is the case in every single car in the world, it is their first shot at it and it's a really good job. As 
Zero to 60 is pegged at 3.6 seconds. But one gripe I have is it just never feels that quick because the car is too composed when putting down power from a standstill. But when you do get rolling, then it is proper fast. And it has seriously got a rapid pace to the DB11. It just doesn't have. The other thing that surprised me is just how comfortable this car is with exaggerated corners and turns. It really feels like it wants to be tracked. It feels like it's one of those cars that you don't occasionally take for track use. It's one that you should actually take because it feels like it belongs there. And for this being just the entry level vantage, that's a great place for a sports car series to start. I love putting power down in this car. That never gets old. Neither does that. I can just keep doing it. And doing it. What the hell, one more time. So satisfying. The other big technical change is this car, for the first time, has an E-diff, or rather an electronic limited slip differential. And it's one that can lock and unlock 100% within milliseconds, depending on what you need. So in low speeds, it can unlock and give you lots of agility. But when it's at higher speeds, it will lock up and give you more stability. So it's what a sports car like this really does need, just as a bare basic, and it does have it as standard. As far as the sound goes, I've had it in Sport Plus so far. For those of you more attuned to my AMG reviews will know that this doesn't sound like the AMG block. The AMG has got a very muscle car sound to it. This, it kind of screams instead. It still gets some gunshots going off now and then in Sport Plus. A lot more frequently now if I switch into track mode and let off the throttle, you hear that immediately. That's a bit more AMG, but none of this sounds, certainly in the build up to the revs, like the AMG version. Oh wow. Track mode is really loud. It sounds brilliant. Oh my god. And the car really wants to scream. It's a very Aston soundtrack. It's sort of a, a mix of the melody that you get in a V8 with one that you find in the V12. And it's really different, it's really pleasing. And I'm so glad, especially coming from AMG, that it doesn't sound like a repackaged GT. I really can't explain the desirability of this car. I can't put it into words. One thing that you must check, check the drone shots of the DB10 Inspector, compare it to our drone shots here and you'll see how similar the shapes of the cars are, how exaggerated the shoulders are of this Vantage, it just looks so damn sexy. The shape of it is so wide on the front and back, it kind of looks like any good track car and we must remember that this is just the entry level Vantage, there will be more to come. When I first saw the DB10 Inspector some three years ago, I leant over to the person next to me and said, this was during the time that there was rumors of an AMG partnership. And I said, imagine if whatever this car becomes ends up getting an AMG engine, how awesome would that be? Little did I know the reality of the fact and just how incredibly desirable this car would be. The Vantage is that type of car that Aston has always done best. It's the most desirable in its segment, in my opinion. And that's something that I don't think the previous Vantage did. It was just a smaller DB9. This one, it punches higher. It wants to be the one that you want. It's a car that's inevitably going to be compared to the AMG GT because of its engine and its shape. It's a car that's going to be compared to the 911, which Aston were gunning for. But this car does things different to them. It's not the muscle car that the AMG is. It doesn't sound like it, and it doesn't behave like it unless you really, really want it to. But you can do it if you want it to. So it's interesting. Plus, it's a GT car like the others just can't manage. It's kind of a side effect of having 70% of what you get out of the DB11. It's just a really good daily. I could see you chewing up miles and miles and miles 
perhaps in better comfort than the DB11. If anything, I think this car handles the road a bit better than the DB11 V8 does. The eventfulness you have in this interior, it's not something you're going to find in the very conservatively designed 911. Same with the exterior, this is much more supercar in its proportions and it's trying to be. Now there is a manual Vantage to come as well and I'm sure we can expect a Vantage S. We all know what this engine is capable of already. In the AMG GT four-door for example it produces 630 brake horsepower so it's got a lot of potential. I also wonder whether that makes putting the V12 into this car an illogical step considering how much lighter this engine is and how much power it can put out. But when are these things ever logical exercises? If we want a V12 howling engine in a small car like the Vantage, then logic doesn't really come into it, bring it on. And of course, we cannot ignore the heritage behind this brand, the link to James Bond as well. It just makes the Vantage the ultimately desirable sports car. And it makes you feel special every time you use it every time you look at it, when you walk up to it, when you park it and you turn back and you look at it, it is just a thing of beauty. No one car will ever look like the other because the spec options and the customizability that's available to you at Aston is just limitless. This new Vantage is the ultimate mixture of great British design, more than a splash of German engineering, and an ethos to make each car better and better and more different to the other one. It makes me really excited for this next century of Aston. And to be honest, this is one of the cars, one of the few cars where I've done the road test, but now I feel like I need to get it on track to appreciate it. What an exciting, exciting car. So guys, thank you so much for watching this road review on the new Aston Vantage. Please do like, share and subscribe as you always do and I'll see you again soon.